Hey guys, Joe here. Today's one take video is going to be about SB961, the fact that it failed, why did it fail, and what's coming next. If you're new to the channel, you should keep watching because I talk about some fun stuff here as well as make a lot of other videos, so your help would be greatly appreciated. For those of you not in the know, SB961 sought to restrict ownership of assault rifles. Very vague, and that's part of the reason it failed. We'll get back to that and high capacity magazines. It also was trying to eliminate the ability of people to meet privately for the purposes of training either in self-defense or as a militia, which was a very minor thing that a lot of people were overlooking, but we'll talk about that before this is over. But the main part of the bill, the assault rifle part, was shot down, not really even shot down, it was tabled. They're gonna bring it up at the next session as they try to work better phrasing out. Four Democrats, decided that they weren't going to vote in favor of the bill so the remaining democrats as well as the republicans and everybody was it was going to be just a no-go so they tabled it with the intent of reintroducing the bill at a later date the democrats that decided not to vote for it said they didn't want to take the rights of the gun owner away and we appreciate that here because what that bill would have done was number one limit high capacity magazines which other states california specifically does on some of their firearm platforms but it also would have made it so that we couldn't buy them after july 1st and after january 1st of 2021 was seeking to make it so a permit was necessary to maintain ownership of your firearm if it hadn't gone to appeal and passed so because of that, those are no longer on the table for the rest of the year. That doesn't mean that we as a society, especially us Virginians, are off the hook. We need to vote at any meeting that comes up. We need to back whoever we can that's going to argue our case for us in a civil way. So make sure that you're out there voting, talking, bringing it up with your friends. Anytime there's a civil kind of meeting kind of a thing, go to it and voice your opinion so that your representatives know not to vote for it next year. The thing that was trying to sneak in that a lot of people just were completely ignoring was the fact that they were also trying to eliminate the ability of people to meet for the purposes of training because the bill as they were proposing it was going to make it a class five felony if you were training in any kind of capacity that could be used to cause bodily harm to another person. That also included karate, jujitsu, self-defense classes, anything where I, as the student, learned a technique that would allow me to harm another person, be it in self-defense or as a form of attack. It's still training in an art that would cause bodily harm or a method that would cause bodily harm, not an art. Everything's an art form if you think of it the right way. That doesn't mean we haven't taken a hit with some of the things that have gone through. Governor Northam got three out of his eight bills passed. The three that passed were the right to ban firearms at certain events or premises during certain times. Red flag laws, which means that if they feel that you are a danger to yourself or others, they can remove your firearms without you actually committing a crime. And one gun per month. If you have an enhanced background check, i.e. concealed carry, you do not have to limit your purchases to one gun per month. However, I still think they're going to try to use that as a little bit of a way to make it harder to get concealed carry permits. There are some states like Minnesota, where I used to live, where you had to get a permit to own a firearm, which was fine. But you also had to show a reason to get a concealed carry. Not every state just says, here, you can have a concealed carry. They actually want you to have a reason why you need to carry a firearm. As a concealed carry holder and somebody that works at a gun store part-time, as well as tends to go places and meet random strangers, I need to have myself protected. So I appreciate that I have my concealed carry now, and I worry that it's gonna become harder for those of you out there that don't have it yet to get it in the future. So if you have a a good amount of training so that you're safe with your firearm and you know how to use it and when to use it, I encourage you to get your concealed carry. If you're just Bubba Gump standing out in your backyard who wants to be able to pull a gun out from inside your waistband because you think somebody's being a pain in the ass, please don't get a concealed carry. You're, you're just going to scare the rest of us and you're going to cause problems. So, sorry. 
Let's talk about the future, because as I said, they tabled the bill, which means they are going to bring it up at the next available session where it can be voted upon. During that time, they're going to try to reword it. The reason why it's going to be very difficult is because they originally had it with too much wording in it and dumbed it down to try to get it passed and thus made it so vague that it wasn't passable in its current form. Originally, they basically took a list of every semi-automatic center-fired rifle and high-capacity firearm and put it on paper and said, we want to ban these. Northam saw that absolutely wasn't going to go anywhere as, long, as well as the fact that he wanted to confiscate. So they dumbed it down and turned it into limiting what you can own, how many you can own, how many rounds you can carry, things like that, and tried to reintroduce it. Well, since he knew that wasn't going to pass, they decided to table it, which means they're going to bring it up next year. So don't relax. Don't sit back on your laurels. If you are thinking about building an AR, you should build it. If you're thinking about buying one, you should buy it now while they're still reasonably priced. If you want to get high capacity magazines, buy a bunch now. They're cheap. You should buy a bunch. You should have a bunch. I don't know why I'm doing this. So yeah, moral of the story is as a state, I think enough of us got our voices heard that enough of our representatives, I'm sorry I keep doing this, it's just, I don't know what to do with my hands. But enough representatives were able to get their voice across saying, hey, look, we don't want this. When 100 counties and cities and municipalities say we're not going to enforce it, and then everybody shows up at a rally and it goes around the block twice, and hundreds of people show up that are armed that aren't in trouble or aren't causing trouble, we've proven that we can handle ourselves, so we need to continue to prove that we can. So please, please, for the love of all that you hold dear when it comes to firearms, don't commit a firearm felony or crime or, or do anything bad, especially if you're a legally registered gun owner, because you're just going to make the rest of us suffer. So that's it. That's my two cents. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you guys for the last video, man, that Glock versus G3 video. You guys really like that one. I took them both out to the range and shot them, and I have that video. I'm working on it. It's a little bit more laid back. I really wasn't worried about accuracy. I was trying to find my hold. I was trying to find how I can actually see. I think I need LASIK and my eyes have been really tired the last few days. So I might have had an eye problem and my dog ate my, my sights. And uh, I was, you know, helping an old lady cross the street and dirt got in my eye. So all those excuses come into play for that video. But it's common. So keep your eyes open as well as I have that water-cooled PC and a couple other things I'm working on. So, yeah, there's going to be some content coming. So buckle up. And as always, I'll talk to you later.